Hi, I'm Kevin Hartley and welcome to Kevin Hartley Photography in my office. This is a channel that I've set up to share my experiences of wildlife and nature with others. So let's go. Here in the British Isles it's estimated that there are over 8 million seabirds around a coastline and of those 8 million birds there are approximately 25 species. So what I want to do in this video is share with you my approach to photographing seabirds. So what we'll do is we'll look at how to identify not the 25 species but we'll look at four individual species. We'll look at the gannet, we'll look at the puffin, we'll look at the razor bull and we'll look at the guillemot. And what we'll do is we'll talk about the habitat, where you can find them around the coastline. There are some fantastic places here in the UK where you can actually get close to seabirds to photograph them. Then what we'll do is we'll look a little, a little bit about the behaviour and then I'll go through my approach to photographing the seabirds and I'll give you some top tips which I think will help you save time and energy when you're planning to go out and photograph seabirds. So let's go and find them and let's photograph them. When it comes to the habitat, where to find seabirds, well, 8 million birds, 25 different species, there's lots of places around the coastline and there's some hot spots where you can find them. But it's actually estimated that no matter where you are in the UK, you're no more than 70 miles away from the coast. And one of the best tips I could give you, pieces of advice is, if you're a wildlife photographer, and especially bird photography, and you've never visited a, a, a seabird colony, then do it. It's absolutely fantastic. And there are some fantastic colonies all around the British Isles. For me personally, it's the east coast of Yorkshire. And from Spurn Point up to Bridlington, then up to Farnborough Head, and then here at Bempton Cliffs. Absolutely fantastic. You've got to visit one if you're into bird photography. Okay, tip number five in how to photograph seabirds is all about the equipment that I would recommend that you need. As a minimum, you're looking at a tripod or a monopod, you're looking at a zoom lens of between 300 and 500 millimeters, although even a 70 to 200 will do, especially up here on the, the coastal pass where the birds come real, really close. You'll need a wide angle lens to get your environmental pictures. I have a 24 to 100, which I use, and that's the, the lens that's um, filming this video at the moment. And the last thing you need to think about is clothing. Okay, today's a beautiful day. Um, couldn't ask for better conditions. However, it can change. I've been here at some days where the weather's been pretty atrocious, and we'll talk about weather in a minute or two. So think about uh, waterproof clothing as well, if you're coming for a day out to photograph seabirds. The first bird we're going to look at is uh, the largest seabird in Great Britain, and indeed the North Atlantic, and that's the gannet. It's a large white bird with black wingtips and a long pointed tail. Both the head and the neck have a tinge of yellowness wash to it. It has a large dagger like bill, blue eyes and it has a long neck. Juvenile gannets have a, a patchwork of dark and light feathering and depending on age and maturity will depend on how dark and how much there is a patchwork on the juvenile bird. Tip number four is all about the weather. Before you go and have your day out, check the weather. Um, it's a two hour round trip, well it's two hours here and two hours back for me to get here to, to, to Bempton Cliffs. I can remember planning to come out for a day's photography, leaving home, weather conditions were perfect and then when I got to um, Bempton, the place was absolutely shrouded in mist <laughs> and it took five hours for it to clear up and that's after getting up very early in the morning. Again, talking about wind, wind plays a very important part, especially in your photography. What you're looking for is a wind that's coming off your shoulder and going out to sea. That means that the birds, will, birds fly into the wind, so when they're coming into the cliffs, they will slow down and it gives you a great opportunity to get some pictures of them landing.
Okay, camera settings. When it comes to camera settings, I think you're looking at three pictures. You're looking at portrait, you're looking at a picture of the, an environmental picture of where you've got the birds in their environment, and then you're looking at birds in flight. So if we start off with the portrait picture, if you're on a supported camera, then you're looking at a shutter speed about 125th of a second, one 250th of a second, F8 aperture, and I always shoot in auto ISO. That's for a portrait picture of a seabird. When it comes to birds in the environment, you're looking to use a, a wide angle lens. Again, you need to be supporting your, your camera on a tripod. You're looking at F8 again, shutter speed, again about 1 250 of a second, maybe a little bit uh, lower than that. And again, I shoot in auto ISO. And then finally, birds in flight. If you want to learn how to photograph birds in flight, visit a seabird colony. You can get so close to them, and some of the birds, you'll get fantastic pictures. My go-to settings for birds in flight are F8, 1 2000th of a second, and again, auto ISO. The next bird we're going to look at is the razorbill, and like a lot of other seabirds, they only come ashore to breed. Razorbills are black above and white underneath. They have a black, broad-tipped razorbill, which they get the name from, with a white stripe. And they also have a thin white line at the eye. And they have a large head with a short neck. Some of the locations that I've mentioned, and again, especially here at, at, at Bempton Cliffs, um, it gives you a great opportunity to get up close to the birds and to get images of bird behaviour. A bird sitting on a rock is a bird sitting on a rock, just like it is a bird sitting on a stick. What you're really after, and these types of places, give you a great opportunity to be able to get images of bird behaviour. So, tip number three is think about behaviour in the images that you're after. Next bird we're going to look at now is the guillemot. Uh, the guillemot is a smallish, dark brown and white bird. It has a very slender neck with a dagger-like bill and it has a thin black stripe which runs behind the eye. Moving on from behaviour, tip number two is all about birds in flight. There's one place where you've got great opportunity to get great images of birds in flight, it's at a seabird colony. You can get close to the birds, the, the, the birds are used to people being around. A couple of tips when you're looking at getting birds in flight. Because there are so many birds in the sky, it can be quite difficult to actually decide what bird you're going to take a photograph. So what you've got to do is, you've got to pick a bird, keep your eye on them, and the thing that I learned from photographing swallows was, which was really difficult uh, in flight, was to try and identify flight patterns. And that's what you need to try and do, identify a flight pattern of the birds. Gannets will, will do it a certain way, fulmers will do it a certain way, and the idea is to pick a bird out at distance, get it in the, the lens of your, your camera, follow it, wait till it gets near to you, focus, and then take your images. So, identify the flight patterns of the birds to get yourself better bird and flight images. Last but by no means least, we have the puffin, otherwise also known as the sea parrot. Puffin is a small, stocky, built, built, built bird. It has a black back with white underparts. Its most distinctive feature is its triangular coloured bill. And it has very distinctive orange webbed feet.
So tip number one. Tip number one is exposure compensation. The majority of the birds that you're going to photograph in seabird colonies are black and white and that can prove quite difficult and especially if you're photographing in an automatic mode so an aperture priority or shutter priority the camera's going to make some decisions for you so you're going to have to think about exposure compensation I did a video um, earlier this year it's part of my wildlife photography series and it was part three on exposure compensation and I'll leave a link to that at the end of this video for you to watch today the conditions have been very bright and I would say that for the majority of the day especially when I was out at sea on the boat earlier this morning I was at minus two thirds of a stop. Up here in the cliffs at the moment, I'm at minus a third of a stop. So you need to think about exposure compensation. Otherwise, you're going to overexpose your birds and you're going to blow the highlights. And there's a lot of white in seabirds. The real tool to help you with your exposure compensation is to read your histogram. Keep an eye on your histogram and make sure that you're not clipping your highlights. That's the tool to use to make sure that you're not overexposing your images and what you're trying to do is try and get as much as your image over to the right without clipping it so keep your eye on the histogram okay what i want to do now is just leave you with some of my favorite images that that i've taken of seabirds and i hope that you enjoy them Okay, to summarise on today, today for me started at 4.30 this morning, um, followed by a two hour drive to get to Bridlington Harbour, to get on the Yorkshire Bell this morning, to go out to see, to see the seabirds, I managed to say that without mucking it up, uh, spent the morning out at sea, getting close to the birds at sea level, photographed them, thoroughly enjoyed it, if you've never done it, I, I thoroughly re recommend it, give it a go. I can't overemphasize enough that if you're a bird photographer and you've never been to a seabird colony, remember, if you're in the UK, you're no more than 70, 70 miles from the coast. Get yourself out, get yourself to a seabird colony and have a great day. But remember and check the weather. Okay, all we ask is that if you've liked this video, could you hit the like button? Could also ask you to consider subscribing to my channel Kevin Hartley Photography doesn't cost anything it's completely free and all it does is it helps me to improve my channel it helps me improve my photography and all I want to do with my channel is to share my knowledge and my experience with other bird photographers and I'm always learning so until the next time stay safe take care and hope to see you soon bye for now <laughs>